When you're away at college, your folks tell you to call home as often as you can. They want to hear everything. And you hear about the big phone bills. Tell them to switch to Sprint. You know why? Sprint has these new volume discounts. You make more than $25 worth of calls a month, your savings get bigger. And that's just the beginning. Then you can call your folks and tell them absolutely everything. Well, not everything. Call Sprint. Find out about it. I'm worried about Calvin. Worried? Why? I don't know. I'm a cop, not a psychiatrist, so it's really hard for me to put my finger on it. But there's something about him that's... He's changed? <sighs> yes. He seems full of nervous energy these days. He's very insistent. He's very impatient. I mean, he can't even stand, you know, alone in a, in a corner for, for who knows how many... I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> stand alone in a corner. <laughs> he, can't, <laughs> he can't stand alone in a corner. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Can't stand this. <laughs> the good news is that we finally have enough evidence against Vincent Kale to haul him in. All right. Where'd it come from? Gary Shaw. He's under guard at a hospital right now, but his testimony definitely links Kale to Judd Wallace and the Wellington murders. These are Shaw's files. Kale recruited practically every kind of business skill. Computer programmers, uh, MBAs, uh, even art students. There were uh, two art majors who s oversaw the whatchamacallit that they were going to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you tried so damn hard, too. I was just rooting for you. <laughs> A woman driving a delivery truck? Yeah, it happens. Well, I'm not being a chauvinist, just a realist. Statistically, there are very few women in the delivery business. That's <laughs> 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 true. <laughs> Calvin told me he gave Derek a report. Derek thought I should know about it. So Calvin says, Derek called my motel room in Fair River until quite late. Why didn't say, why didn't say Dick? Dick, I said it. I didn't say it. Nigga, no, I didn't say it. Cock, thank you. Nigga, I can't snack. It took him a long time to figure that one out. Chris, whose side are you on? Look. If Dee Dee doesn't understand, that's one thing. If Beth doesn't understand, so what? They are not cops. You know what a cop learns? Get tough, but not too tough. Deal with all the horror. Oh, but... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, right. He just got back. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, it's the same type of building, and uh, he it's. Tell him about the envelope. I'm get. I'm getting to that. Shoot, I can't think. <laughs> Oh, this lovely police... Thanks. This lovely police woman here just made it all possible for me to get up here. I, I'd have been in pieces if it wasn't for her. So, yeah, one, one, more or less. That, more or less. Thank you, Detective Ethan, for assisting Ms. Gabor. Uh, come uh, uh, right this way. Oh, uh, Ms. Gabor. Uh, yes, I, I have some coffee in my office. One autograph, please. 
Hey, that was Ava Gabor, you know? <laughs> and what are you doing here? Two are going to be partners for a long time. Yeah, what's his name again? Uh, Egan, right? Uh, Chris Egan, right? That's right. So where is he? Right in the next room. <clears throat> Chief, what are you so happy about? <laughs> I'm just going to leave you two to get acquainted. Like you for a partner, we should be able to clean up this town in about a short weekend. Ah, Detective Calvin Stoner, I believe. Chris Egan. Heard a lot about you. Yeah, well, evidently I didn't hear enough about you. Chris is for Christine. Afraid so. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry about what I said. I it's... took it as a compliment. Good, that's exactly how I meant it. Those are some really fancy moves you got there. Is that uh, your typical NYPD training? Oh, well, a little extra practice on my own. It bother you I'm a woman? No, it's just a little different is all. Everybody's told me how Damien Tyler was a hell of a cop. I have some pretty large shoes to fill. Yeah, they didn't fit Gabler very well at all, believe me. Yeah, I heard about him too. Oh, that's just terrific. You just arrived. Everybody's giving you all the information. Me, they're keeping in the dark. Okay. If Tyler isn't here, I am. Do I get a chance? Look, um, uh... Chief Mallory's told me all about your work in New York, and frankly, with your record, I should be asking you for a chance. Oh, now that kind of attitude I can deal with. <laughs> I may not be a very good detective, but there is one thing I'm having a little trouble figuring out right now, and that is why would you give up a career like that with NYPD for Monticello? I needed a change. We have a case? Oh, yeah, but there's no rush. Don't you want to unpack and settle in? No way. Sooner I'm in the water, sooner I learn to swim. All right. Well, we've been putting together this nice, thick little file on a local fence. His name is Jake Venefra. I think uh, we sew up one or two more loose ends. We can probably close them down. Ah, uh, run something like this. You're sure he's receiving stolen property, but there's no proof he knows it's stolen. Ah, uh, I see you've done this before. Once or twice. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, uh... Yeah, Vanefra's always used middlemen, you know? No direct contact with any of the bent nose boys at all. As a matter of fact, he's been around a long time, I guess because most of his middlemen appear to be just as clean as he, but lately he's been uh, using this dude who's uh, got dirty fingers, you know what I mean? He's a real small-timer named E.J. Pond. I don't know why Vanefra would even use him in such a class operation, but maybe he's just getting a little sloppy in his old age. Hmm. Then let's retire him. We're going to close down one of the biggest fencing operations this city's ever seen. Now, this is Jake Vanefra's warehouse. You'll notice there's an entrance here. There's one here our back. Vanefra's office is right here in the middle. Now, some of you don't know the uh, new kid on the block here. That's Detective Chris Egan. Then some of you have already been tossed around the gym by her. I understand it's one of her favorite pastimes. Just working out. Nothing personal. Yeah, well, remember all those bruises are nothing personal, Chris. <laughs> Okay. Manefra's profile indicates that he keeps one bodyguard with him at all times. Both men should be considered armed and dangerous. Yeah, but we don't want any shooting unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, I don't mean that we're going to go in there with a smile and a prayer. Just want to make sure all you guys are always on your toes. Manefra's had his way around here for a long, long time, and he's not about to go down easy. Detective Stoner and I will each lead squads. His team will hit the front at 0900. My team coming through the rear at the same moment. Now, I hope you've had time to study this diagram. It could save your lives. Okay, any questions? No, no, no. sir. All right. Egan, you got the warrants? Signed, sealed, and ready to be delivered. Nervous? A little. New faces, new places. A lot of unknowns. Yeah, same old routine. Now don't worry, you'll do just fine. Trust me? All the way. Thanks. Okay, shall we get the show on the road? Yeah, I didn't have any other plans for this morning. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's mobilize. 
I'm gonna make you eat it. Street. Look, I don't care if it's your lunch hour, Austin. Just get your magic kits over there pronto. Got another murder case on our hands. Oh, for crying out loud. You know, I left the big city for some peace and quiet in America's heartland. Yeah, tell me about it. So who is it? Some small-time PI by the name of uh, Walter Gantz. So, Chris, you want a written invitation or what, huh? Well, come on, Chris. What's wrong? Chris, I have seen that face before. That, that day at headquarters when we were questioning Gunther Wagner. He came to see you. Walter. Walter Gans is my ex-husband. At the police academy. We were married the day we were inducted into the force. We had a baby boy. Matthew. After Matthew was old enough, I returned to active duty. I lucked out, was promoted to detective for my work on two cases. It had nothing to do with luck, Chris. You are good. Anyway, everything happened very fast. I did all right as a detective. Walter remained a uniformed patrol officer. That started to get to him. After a while, he couldn't stand the idea that his wife was better at his chosen profession than he was. Three years later, we were divorced. Chris, you don't have to talk about all this right now. I do. The faster you know it all, the faster you can find out okay. who killed him. Okay, go ahead. Walter transferred to a precinct on the other side of the city. A little while after that, his father died and left him this building. Walter moved to Monticello. For three years, I raised Matt on my own. 
and tried to keep up my career. Well, considering your record, I'd say you did a hell of a job. A boy needs a father, Calvin. And that city was really getting to me. It, there seemed no end to the, the, the filth and dirt that we fought day after day. When this job opportunity came up, I jumped on it. To get out of that place, to have Matt near his father again, it just seemed like the perfect opportunity. But do you have any idea who might want to kill him? No. Well, he told me he was being followed by somebody. He didn't tell me who it was. Some case that he was working on. Oh, God, poor Walter. If he was murdered because somebody thought he knew too much. Oh, Kelvin, he meant well, but he just wasn't good enough of a detective for anyone to worry. Look, I think you should just take the rest of the afternoon off, you know? No. Now, come on, don't argue with me. Just go. Just do it. If I need you for anything, I'll call you. Okay. No reason to hide anything anymore, please. Matthew, we have a visitor. Can you shake hands? Well, hello, Matthew. Who are you? My name's Derek. Oh, would you like some coffee, Chief? Yeah, if it's no trouble. Are you an Indian chief? <laughs> well, uh, kind of, actually. Your mom is one of my braves. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, you go and play now, okay? Okay. That's a well-behaved young man. Thank you. Police discipline. Something his mother could have used a little more of, I think. Look, Chris, you don't have to talk if you don't want to. I, I do want to. After all this time, it'll be a relief. All right. Against departmental regulations, I was supplying Walter with privileged information. All right, now I'm beginning to understand. At first, I only wanted to help him find a possible case he could work on. When I came to Monticello, he hadn't had a case in six months. So one day, I called Walter to tell him there wasn't anything he could do on the Venefra case. Calvin heard my end of the conversation. And this is what started the rift between you and Calvin that no one wanted to explain to me? Yes, but Calvin isn't at all to blame. And that's what made you run headstrong after Everett and get yourself shot. Well, I had to prove I wasn't a spy for Venefra, although getting myself shot wasn't part of the idea. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, Walter really was a terrible detective. It was terrible. He was so caught up in, in the romantic ideal of the profession that he got from reading books. He was a good man. And a good father. And I miss him.
to sleep. Hey, how are you feeling? Fine. Chris, Dr. Ferris says... Miles, would you just please go away? I don't want to talk to anybody right now. What? What are you talking about? Please? Please? You've been unconscious for over two weeks. We didn't know whether you were going to live or die. I just want to be by myself for a while, okay? Can I speak to Miles alone, please? All right, they're gone. Chris, what is it? What's the matter? Miles, I can't see. I'm blind. Light with your eyes. Even if it's just the tiniest little speck. Nothing? <clears throat> no, it's the same as it was when I woke up a few hours ago. All right, I'm going to be very tiresome. I want you to tell me exactly how you felt when you regained consciousness. I need to know. Maybe I missed something. Miles, Maybe... Miles, I'm going to be fine. Really, I am. You said you felt some kind of disorientation. Yeah, almost like I was waking up in the morning, only it didn't really feel like my bed. And then it didn't really feel like morning. I opened my eyes and it was still dark. What kind of shadowy darkness? No, what kind? no, it was a pitch black and um, cold. Like a cold black pillow being pressed down over my face, smothering me. And what then? And then everything started coming back to me. My living room, me sitting in it, waiting for a man. Only when he came, he wasn't a man at all. He was just a dark shape coming through the window. I drew down on him. Well, you know, all I remember thinking is, is how very, very much I missed Matthew and that now it was finally over and he could come home again. And then the world exploded. How badly was I hit? The bullet grazed your head and mid-range of the cerebral cortex glanced off. You missed my eyes? Yes. So why can't I see? I don't know yet. Maybe it's just a temporary trauma caused by the force of a bullet, a concussion to the cortex region. Concussion? <laughs> that, that's it, then. That's, that's got to be it. My eyesight will return in, in a few hours, won't it? Won't it, Miles? like a mess, Detective Egan. I don't care if you are the district attorney. You have no right to come barging in here like this. I was only stating the truth. What makes you think I want to hear your truth? Who asked you? No one. Well, then please leave. Not yet. I don't understand this. Why are you here? To make you listen. Why should I listen to you? What right have you to ask me to listen? Because, Chris, I was once blinded myself, suddenly, irreversibly, and I found myself facing that doorway that you now face. What doorway? The one that leads to a new life. It was some kind of chemical thrown into my face. By whom? A hoodlum involved in a case I was working on. It's not important now. The doctors told me I'd never be able to see again. How did you feel? <laughs> I didn't believe them. I knew it couldn't happen to me. 
I knew it all had to be just a bad dream and that I would wake up at any moment. Funny thing was, though, it was only in my dreams that I could see. Yes. I see it all, too, clear as day. Faces. My desk. Um, little things like, like my pencil sharpener. And that chip of paint missing off my file cabinet. My office. But then you wake up again. Yes. Chris, one day I realized, as I had to realize eventually, that waiting around wasn't the answer. The world was going on, leaving me behind. As much as I pretended otherwise, that's what was happening. I didn't want to be left behind. Yeah, well, there's a real good chance that my eyesight's going to come back, so... Maybe. But you can't wait for that, Chris. You could wait forever. Where will you be then? I'm so scared. I know. I was too. But you've got to learn to depend on your other senses. Chris, I discovered that blindness is like any other handicap. It can be lived with. That it must be lived with. I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. Of course you can. You have to. There are no other choices. What do you want to do? Waste your life away? Feel sorry for yourself? That's not a choice. That's surrender. Chris, I can tell you're a fighter. So am I. We always will be. We won't surrender. Well, what am I supposed to do? I feel so lost. First of all, accept the reality that a part of you has died. Next thing, get that rehabilitation teacher back in here and really get to work. The therapy wouldn't hurt either with Dr. Carell or somebody else. I've just been always so independent. And you can be independent again with their help. Oh, Chris. I know I'm asking a lot, but are you really going to surrender? Or will you try? I'll try. I will try. Thank you. as I am. What do you think she'll be like? The same, just the same. No, she'll never be the same. Without sight, she can't hunt anymore, she can't shoot a gun. Oh, honey, you and Chris haven't hunted together in ages. It won't be that different, honest. I, I just wonder if we should have told Matthew. No, Chris wants to do it herself. It's her right. I just feel bad about leaving them here alone. Oh, me too. Look, I'm going to try per to persuade Chris to let us just give up the Florida trip, just for this year. Oh. <clears throat> it's her. Huh. Matt, Mommy's here. Here. Chris. Hi. Oh. Hi, Dad. Welcome home, kid. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Mom. Right. Oh. Oh. Oh, it was so good to see you, too. Matt? Mom! Oh, Matthew! Hi! 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 Oh, I missed you. Made good time. Well, the roads are pretty clear, not much snow at all. Oh, would anybody like some homemade bread? Mm. I baked four loaves this morning. She's been bustling around here since dawn. Oh, you should talk. Oh, you too. Now, I know this is a difficult request. Relax. <laughs> uh, hot chocolate, then? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, Chief, I'll show you where to put your bag. Great. Thank you. Hi, Matthew. What's wrong with you, Mom? Uh... Matt, I had an accident, and although I wasn't hurt very badly, something did happen. See, my sight went away. Oh, listen, I don't want you to be upset. 
It's going to be fine. That's why I came to visit you, to prove to you that we'll be able to get along just fine, just, just like we always have. Do you believe me? Uh, Matt, you've got to say something. Are, are you nodding your head or shaking your head? I believe you, Mom. Honey, it's going to be just fine, I promise. Hey, you know what? You could, you could be my eyes. Yeah, just until I get, you know, adjusted to the place. Would you like that? Could you give me a tour of the farm, maybe, later on? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, Matthew, you can show me around. But you go up here. I know, but I have to learn it all over again. Come here. Give me your hand. Grandpa still keep wood in that old shed? Yeah, let me show you. Okay. I have all the extra blankets I need. Your mother already asked. No, it's not that. I wanted to thank you for your support. Mom told me how you stood up for my decision to stay here alone with Matt. Well, I guess you know what's best for you. Yeah, well, we've all seen where my bullheadedness has gotten me in the past. Well, the past is over now. Right now you need to be with Matthew, and this seems to be the best place for it, I think. Thanks. That's what I think, too. Chris. What? Uh, nothing. I, uh, I admire your courage. <laughs> Why? You have as much courage as I do, maybe more. No, not always. Derek, tell me something now, truthfully. Why have you stuck by me through all this? You know the answer to that. Oh, Derek. Oh, it was Chris. I'm sorry. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I never meant to. No, I know you didn't mean to. If only... What, if only what? Oh. Good night, Derek. Path to the woodshed and the wind of the barn is so clear I shouldn't have any trouble finding my way around. Oh, thanks. Oh, I love it here. Mom, I missed you so much. Oh, Matthew, I missed you too. But we're together now.
That's what they were trying to hide. Perfect. Well, they're a little wet, but they'll do. Matthew? Matt? Yes, B. Well, didn't you hear me calling for you to open the side door? I was afraid. Of me? Oh, silly. Come here. Oh, you. Oh, you're freezing. Where have you been? So I take the front porch. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, I meant what I said before. It would have been very difficult for me to do. I'm sorry I got mad at you. Well, apology accepted. But we're probably going to get mad at each other again. Just don't run away. It's okay to fight, because, you know, we live together. You got to fight sometimes. <laughs> Listen, now that I've got some wood, let's build a fire. You get a couple logs, and I'll get the matches, all right? Okay, thanks again. Yeah, and you be careful. Yeah, bye, Sheriff. Oh, well, that's it then. Sheriff said the river road's underwater and officially closed to traffic, which means you and I are stuck here for the duration, partner. Frank Robertson Crusoe? No, Robinson Crusoe. I never told you that story? Hello? Chris, it's Derek. Oh, Derek, hi. What's wrong? Well, listen, there haven't been any, uh, any strangers around there, have there been? No, and I don't expect any. Well, why do you say that? Well, all that snow that we passed on the way up here has melted. There's been a lot of local flooding, and the road's washed out. <sighs> oh, great. I'm glad to hear that. It means your attacker couldn't have possibly trailed you up there. My attacker? Yeah, he's on the move. You know who it is? I believe so. I believe it's Eric Blake. Lane Wilton's assistant. Oh, I remember him. Just kind of vaguely, though. Yeah, well, keeping a low profile seems to be his specialty, but he fits the age and the description of, of Neil, Patrick Kendall's older brother. Wait a second. Was Blake with you both those times that, that Chris was at Image, Inc.? Well, Eric and I met with Greg Schaefer on the first occasion. Then Eric brought a manuscript on the day you said that the detective's gun was taken, yes. Well, why didn't he sign the visitor's book? Well, he rarely does. I usually sign it for both of us. They know him over there, all of them. Did you hear that, Chris? Yeah, right under our noses. Oh, with any luck, he's still under our noses. Look, you sit tight. I'll call you back as soon as we get him, and I, I think that should be soon. Okay, well, I'm not going anywhere. Thanks. <sighs> Matt, I'll, I'll be with you in a minute, okay? I'm gonna tell you the whole story of Robinson Crusoe and his good man Friday. Right where Dad said they'd be. Anybody there? Well, Log, looks like you escaped the fire for one day at least. You for the last time. This isn't another one of our detective games, is it? 
There really was a man out in the yard with me? Yes. Mark, Carolyn, you in there? Okay, maybe that's a neighbor, and maybe it's not. Hello? Mark! Listen to me. Matthew, listen to me very carefully. You remember when Sheriff Mungard came by and I told you that if he did anything suspicious to cough so that I would know and then run out the back door? Yes, I remember. Okay. I want you to stand inside of the kitchen door. Remember all of our detective games. I want you to peek out the crack, but don't let him see you. Hello? Anybody at home? Okay, so he knows Grandma and Grandpa's names. He might be one of the neighbors from one of the other farmhouses on this side of the river. But if he does anything, anything at all suspicious, I want you to cough and then run for it. You understand? So now I'm counting on you. I won't let you down, Mom. Okay. Hello? It's Larry Benoit. What's going on? Larry Benoit. Mrs. Egan isn't home. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, who are you? A uh, friend. Well, so am I. And uh, my uh, pickup truck is going to float away if I don't get some help. <laughs> Hey, what the hell's going on? I I is that thing loaded? Both barrels. Uh, who are you and where are the Egans? I'm their daughter. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ma Mark said something about you coming home. I I'm Larry Benoit. My, my dad and I bought the Willows Farm about two years back. I it's just on the other side of the river. The road's washed out. That's what I've been trying to explain. I thought I could ford the river in my pickup. I, I got the suspension jacked way up. But, uh... Now the current was too strong. I went into a mud bank, and now if I don't call a garage, the river's gonna wash my truck right away. You can use the phone, but don't try anything. <sighs> Staring down the nose of a 12 gauge? Not a chance. The phone's over there. Thanks. So, what's wrong with you, anyway? Hi. Uh, Mitch. Yes, Larry. How are you? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You have to ask Debbie about that. Uh, but that's why I called. Listen, uh, the river road is flooded. And I was on my way to see her. I thought I could make it through. I didn't. It's not funny. Look, my old man will skin me alive and hang me out to dry if I lose that pickup. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just after the bridge. Uh, how long? OK, great. So I'll meet you there in 15 minutes. OK, thanks, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Can I call Debbie Melker? That's my girlfriend. She was expecting me. Go ahead. Hi, Deb. <laughs> yeah, I know. I uh, had a little accident. Yeah, I, I made it across the river. My truck didn't. Um, no, no, Mitch is, uh, Mitch is going to come and uh, tow it out. And I'll be over after that. Uh, one more thing, though. Listen, I'm at the Egan's. And I don't know what's going on here, but uh, their daughter has a shotgun pointed at me. Uh, so if I'm not there in, say, half an hour, you call the police. <laughs> Deb, I'm serious. Uh, look, I got to go. I'm uh, wearing out my welcome here. No, no, I'll, I'll be OK. OK. Sorry. Would have done the same thing. You know, uh, we're really not that dangerous out here in the country. <laughs> what was that? Uh, that 
That was my son. He... He's in the kitchen. He has a cold. Uh, well, it sounded like he, uh, he needed something. No. Maybe you should check on him. No, he's fine. Matthew! Matt, if, um, if, if you're gonna go outside, you put your hat and your coat on. Well, listen, um, uh, I should probably go. No, wait, I'm sorry. It's, it's, um, it's gonna be a while before your tow truck comes. Why, why don't you just, um, stay here where it's warm? Ah, uh, no thanks. Not with you waving that gun around. I'll put it down. <laughs> now since you called the tow truck. Yeah. I guess so. What? I really appreciate that soup. Uh, Debbie was going to make lunch for me. Yeah, well, least I can do for an old friend of my folks. Listen, I'm sorry, but I'm just not real used to being alone in the country. No harm done. Uh, where'd your son get to? I was looking forward to meeting him. He's probably in the barn doing chores. Do uh, uh, you mind if I wash up before I take off? No. It's in there. Thanks. Something wrong? No soap. Oh. I'll get you some. Listen, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you were blind. I mean, you, you get around so well, anybody... Listen, you move an inch. At this range, I could put you through the wall. Okay, okay. Get out! Hey, you don't have to tell me. I'm Thank going. You. Thanks for the hospitality. You help us. There's got to be a way to get to the Egan farmhouse. Well, maybe I could. You see, what I was thinking of is that uh, Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Just in case you're look, looking for the gun, I have it. I see. Point you don't see. Who are you? You know damn well. <laughs> don't you? Neil Kendall? Oh, Neil Kendall. Well, that's one of the aliases I use when I'm working for Vincent Kale, but my real name is Eric Blake. My brother's name is Pat. Patrick, you remember. So what happens now? Now? You killed Pat? No, no, in the line of duty. Don't was... you think that matters? No, no, you're gonna pay for what you did. 
here. What do you mean, here? Well, of course, you can't see it. See what? A photograph. Of what? Two little boys. Doesn't matter. You know, Chris, you don't mind me calling you Chris, do you? I mean, we've been so close for such a long time. I was going to say you played your part very well. Thank you. No, I mean it. You know, I, I, I saw that press conference on TV. I never suspected a thing. Yeah, well, that was the whole idea. And then, then there was the day at the hospital, and I came to see you. You were blind. You still drove me off. Yeah, well, it was pretty easy. Don't you be smart. No, I, I have to hand it to you. I never suspected then <laughs> either. When did you? Oh, I knew something was wrong when you didn't go back to your job after that press conference. Who was the, uh, who was the woman I followed from your apartment to WEON just a couple of weeks ago? My rehabilitation teacher. Huh? Huh. She did a marvelous job. Too bad it was all for nothing. for Vincent Kale. That's right. One of the most notorious figures in the New York underworld. <laughs> He's got a lot of bad press. Yeah, so how long did you work for him? From the time I was 15. Early start. I didn't like being poor. What about your brother, Pat? He worked for Kale, too. Yeah, he worked for Vince for about three years until you killed him. Oh, I didn't kill him, Blake. What the hell does that mean? Just that. <gasps> don't, you, don't try and talk your way out of it. I didn't kill him. Okay. Okay, but I didn't pull the trigger. You killed him. You're crazy. You were the one who recruited that kid into Kale's organization. Shut up. You were the fourth member of the bank robbery gang, but you just never went out in any of the jobs. <laughs> Mr. Kale's orders. No, you sent your baby brother instead. Mr. Kale's orders. You trained him. You planned the bank robberies. You put the gun in his hand. You killed him. No, Blake. stop it. <laughs> It's too bad you can't see this gun. But you know what's here, don't you? Yeah. Huh? Here? <laughs> there? <Stop>. There? <laughs> oh, God! <laughs>
Nice try, Detective Egan. Oh, God. Why don't you just get it over with? Maybe I will. 